Hello everyone, this is Natalie from NellyDesign.com. Today I want to show you a gift I made for a friend. It's a wall art I made with some leftover of a fabric that she had because she has an enterprise uh, where she makes things by sewing. So I wanted to make a little art for her with some leftover fabric. So I asked her to give me some leftover fabric, not saying what I was going to do with it. And I'm going to show you exactly what I did and how I did it. So let's start by going to Cricut Design Space. I will have the sewing machine for you. If you go to Nelly Designs Library, you're going to download the SVG that you can find over there and please save it to your computer somewhere that you will remember. And once that's done, you click here on upload and you upload image, you browse and you find the, the SVG file where you have saved it on your computer and you click open. So this is the SVG file, you save it. Again, you click here, it becomes green and then you insert image. So the image for me was 11 point something, something, um, because that's the size I needed, but you can also scale it to the size you want. You're gonna first cut this image on a cardstock, a white cardstock or whatever cardstock left over that you don't want. It will just, be uh, helpful for you as a guide first of all then what you need to do is go to shape and find a shape that you like for myself i chose a triangle and i unlocked it and i scaled it so that it was like not big enough but not too small in either so i wanted it to be able to fit two triangles but not all of the triangles so you go as you like. So this is the way I made it. Almost that's the, the size I made it. And let me just close the eye of the sewing machine so I show you what I did with this. So once you have the, the shape that you want, make sure it's a shape that you'll be able to duplicate a lot of times and that if you turn over, they will fit one inside the other. So once you have duplicated a couple of times, you can go here and click make it. On your mat, you're going to place your fabric leftovers and you're going to find out where they are. So mine, I had really to look at the, the numbers right here and try to figure out where to fit all of the uh, triangles. And in order to save as many as the fabric as I could, I just turned it like this. You can hold shift if you want so that it rotates perfectly. And I try placing it like that so I could save as much fabric as I could. Now, if you want to save a little bit of time, let me cancel this. You can also maybe group them two by two like this. So select both of them, flip them vertically. And once they are grouped like that, you're going to attach. So if you go like this, two by two, you can do it on that side too. Um, attach do these ones also, and then we'll du duplicate them a couple of times, and then you duplicate it another time. So when you hit make it, now it's easier to move them two by two and to place them like this. So it goes a bit faster, but it might not fit your fabric you have. So that's why you have some of them that are single and I can't find them right now, right here. So that you, you just try to make them fit with your fabric. So to cut them, you're gonna use the pink mat and the rotary blade of the Cricut Maker. So when all the triangles and the sewing machines are cut, you're gonna flip the sewing machine over. And I drew a line, an horizontal line on it because I wanted my triangles to be leveled and I have an eye for that so so I wanted to make sure they were leveled and I used some transfer sheet actually it's the paper from the dollar store that is uh, used to cover books so I'm fixing the transfer paper with scotch tape to my mat making sure the sticky side is facing me and then you need to place all the little triangle to cover all the sewing machine now, the important thing to remember is that you want to put the little triangles face down, meaning that the nice side of the fabric will be facing down. I must admit, it took a little bit of time, but it was fun trying to place all these 
nice patterns and colors and I had some help of my daughters so we had a fun time So once all the little triangles are placed, you're going to transfer the triangles and the sticky sheet onto a Cricut mat. Now what I'm trying to figure out now is where the sewing machine will end up so that I can place the exact same thing on Cricut Design Space. So you see the sewing machine seems to be at the bottom at 9, so I'm going to place the sewing machine at 9, making sure to first click mirror. I'm using the rotary blade and the fabric setting to cut all the little triangles in the shape of the sewing machine. So you'll see that the rotary blade has also cut the transparent paper, which is totally fine, no problem there. Just be careful when you remove it from the Cricut mat because you don't want to have all those little strings from the fabric. And you can use your spatula, it helps a lot. My objective was to transfer the fabric onto my wood planks. Unfortunately, it was really stuck to the sticker paper, so it's fine. It just took me a little bit more time. I had to put Mod Podge on my wood plank and add all the little, all the little triangles one by one. And yes, I must admit, it took a lot of time, but it was really worth it. And if you want to know, I didn't put Mod Podge over it because I really wanted to have the the appearance of fabric and not lose this appearance, this texture. To cut the words, I'm using Cricut stencil. Afterwards, once I've weeded everything out, I'm applying Cricut's transfer sheet. You'll see that the transfer sheet really sticks to the stencil because it's plastic. One thing I always forget to do, but I really suggest you do, is that apply your uh, transfer sheet on your either on your shirt, on your sweater, or on a towel to reduce the sticking. But you'll see even then, since my wood was not very equal and it was not really adhering properly, the stencil was not adhering properly, I'm using some tape to hold the stencil in place. And with the spatula, I'm removing the transfer sheet, but I had to go very slow. So it was still a long process. Then when the transfer sheet is off, I'm using Mod Podge to fill the gaps. Because my wood is not flat, I don't want the paint to go beneath the stencil. So using a little Mod Podge, it will seal all the gaps and then I'll be able to apply my paint. The paint that I applied is a light shade of uh, pink, but I, then I changed my mind and used a darker shade. Just go on top of it so you're allowed to change your mind with paint that's the beauty of it so to apply the paint you just dab on the stencil make sure you cover all the letters and if you're like me you're probably scared to go around the stencil so you can add some more tape if you don't want to mess up uh, your wood plank because that's totally me I but I think I did fine that time <laughs> So when I removed the stencil, of course my wood was not uh, straight, so I had to make some touch-ups with a paintbrush, but it's totally fine. For the final touch, I'm using an embroidery thread to mimic uh, the sewing machine thread and I'm uh, gluing it with Mod Podge since it dries clear so it's perfect. I also cut a little flower that I found in Cricut Design Space for free and I'm adding it as a little final cute touch. 
So it's not an easy project, I must admit, I said it a couple of times, but it was totally worth it. I'm in love with the result and my friend was really happy too. So I hope you did enjoy this tutorial. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did and I'll see you next time. Bye!